Hi guys, um, timer started, so we'll see how this goes. I think I'm going to be blinded by that projector, so if I disappear off to the side, hopefully nobody will mind. Um, hello, this talk was initially, um, you know, well, titled An Idiot's Guide to Open Data Science, and realistically it should have been An Idiot's Guide to Data Engineering in a Shitstorm of Open Data where nothing makes sense, nothing's consistent, everything goes wrong, and I hate it all. Um, but it ended up working out vaguely, so we'll see how it goes. Um, I take uh, criticism, heckling, and everything live, so just bring it on. Um, I'll look after the timing. Um, so I am at Bolter Online. Um, I tweet at Bolter. All of that stuff's in there. Um, work at Alert Logic. So doing data science in the cybersecurity context. So we're hiring for threat and exploit researchers. So if you want to break things, give me a shout. Um, I'm one of the directors at Farset Labs, so the hackerspace in Belfast, um, and that's been seven years of hell, but it's fun. Uh, this notebook, this, this is all a live Jupyter notebook with all of the data embedded in it, so if you want to fuck around with what I'm doing with this, head to present.bolster.online and look up the NIDC talk. You should be able to follow it. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Um, so that's, without further ado, um, Disclaimers, um, people have been asking about the scar. The scar is from a Kremlin-related stage dive incident at the weekend. It's fine, don't worry about it. It looks worse than it is. Um, this was supposed to be built up to, uh, I was hoping that this talk was gonna get more into the science of the data. We didn't get that far. Open data sucks. Um, all of this code is released under the what the fuck public license. Um, so do whatever the fuck you like with it. It's not mine, just take it. If it solves somebody else's problem, please use it. Um, so, big question, what is data science? This is something that, I'm just going to adjust this thing uh, bigger. Um, so, deriving actionable business and operational insights from multimodal data sources. That sounds like a load of bullshit, aka turning numbers into other numbers and occasionally pretty graphs. Um, so, uh, there's an XKCD for everything. Um, data science in Northern Ireland. This is something that um, you know occasionally pops up with people going, oh, data science doesn't happen here. We don't do that. We do like ships and farming and FDI. Um, but some of that FDI has data science. Um, there's actually a really strong corporate ecosystem of people that are doing data science. So the list is there. Um, I'm not going to go through it, but I will point out that you know Alert Logic are nice. Um, I realize that I've completely forgotten part of my prep for this. Does anyone use laser pens anymore? Is that kind of passe? But yeah, we'll save that for later. Um, but there's also a load of open source and public meetups as well that touch into data science. There was a conversation recently about data engineering. Why don't we have a data engineering meetup? The answer is we have data engineering meetups. It's just like fractions of all of these. Um, and yeah, if you want a job, these are fantastic. Um, there's also a surprising amount of local government and community and voluntary sector support for open data and data science in general. So open data and I has been leading the way in terms of getting government to open up about what's available. Detailed data from the sort of private and voluntary sector has been doing a fantastic amount of data-driven journalism, uh, which has made real headway into actually making things understandable for people, using evidence instead of the usual water boundary that our politics and public policy is mostly discussing. And da, da, da. Uh, we've also kind of got Northern Ireland data science has a place at the world stage. We're attracting conferences. We're attracting you know, hackathons coming from grand European projects. We're, you know, we're running open data camps. You know, we're not just that little island off an island off an island. We're now kind of an important thing in Europe at the minute. Um, so yeah, Brexit. Um, so what is open data? There's a couple of definitions in here. Uh, freely used, modified and shareable by everyone. Uh, sh freely available without restrictions. Um, available to everyone to access. Access, use and share, especially your NAN. Um, so I love the Open Data Institute. Um, so I'm going to be stealing an awful lot of this next set of slides from these. But in general, open data should be open, accessible, available, understandable and traceable. You should know where it's coming from. You should be able to use it. Um, as it stands at the minute, none of that's really true. Um, at least in Northern Ireland. So the following slides are completely and shamelessly stone, stolen from the ODA, ODI, but they said it was okay um, in exchange for me giving them a better gift for one of theirs. Um, so open data should be easy to access, should be in a standardized format and it's easy to trace back where it comes from. Open data isn't the same as big data, but it'd be nice if it was. Um, opening up big data lets people use it to spot trends, fill gaps and improve services. It's not the same as shared data. Your private data should only be open to those who share it. So this is a big part of GDPR that's come through. Um, so don't worry about personal data coming into this. 
Um, open data is good for democracy. Open data can also help governments stay on their toes and make better public policy decisions for society, the economy, and the environment. Actually, having evidence-driven policy would be an absolute godsend for Northern Ireland at the minute. Having an executive would also be a good thing. Um, open data can help fight crime. This is something that's underwhelming. Now, this is a direct quote from their one, so it was related to the UK, but helping stolen bikes. But actually, one of the best data sets in Northern Ireland at the minute is the PSNI's open data. So if anyone wants to fuck around with something, chase that one down, because it's an awful lot of fun. Um, open data is good for your health. Uh, there's been loads of good health hackathons and public health. Um, um, we're still trying to work out how to get like patient data out, but it's not really, you know, it's, there is evidence that says that we can actually use data to derive public good in terms of assessing health impacts. Um, can help save lives. So uh, there's large projects at the minute in trying to coordinate funding across mul uh, multinational organizations to deconflict, but then also collaborate on uh, humanitarian crises across the world. And Hoping that it gets you around your city. Northern Ireland isn't on any of these things. It's a bit shit, but you know it's nice that you know these things do happen. Um, and you, data visualization is sort of one of my areas that I'm, I kind of like the idea of, but I'm not very good at. But we'll see how that goes. But back to the actual good stuff. Um, in terms of like, scales of openness, how open is open? Um, there's a big problem with, uh, you know, this is a very complicated area to discuss. What formats does it need to be? How do you transfer that around? Um, you know, how, how do you indicate metadata? How do you indicate qualitative data? Do you put all of your like, data definitions in the columns? There's a simplified system that is basically called the five-star data system that was by, or developed by Tim Berners-Lee. And it's basically this five-step of, um, is it in, right, if, if it's available but in shitty formats, that's one star. If it's available and then it's in kind of like vaguely usable, kind of machine readable, that's a two star. If it's in open formats, it's a three star. If it's in relational formats where it indicates traceability and linkages between different sets of data, then that's, um, that's a four star roughly. And then if you've got uh, linkage, openness, open standards, and um, traceability, I think it was the fifth one. Anyway, the five star one is very, very rare because it's basically having big meta graph uh, databases that are queryable and actionable. Very, very rare. Um, if you want to see more about how that all breaks down, the links on, on this are all very active. Um, so yeah, in Northern, Northern Ireland, shit, that's, that's, we all agree on that one. This is just kind of like a normal thing. Uh, yeah, it's just by default Northern Ireland shit. Um, and we've got like loads of red, so you know, whenever you put this into a lethal, so um, without going into too much of it, this is this uh, sort of breakdown of um, is it uh, available, is it open, is it um, copyable, is it up to date, is it uh, visible, yes, and is it free. Um, so basically, if you want land and property stuff, government spending or election results, you know, the, the, you know, the really boring things, no, none of that's really interesting in Northern Ireland, um, then yeah, you don't get any of that. For the rest, we're actually pretty good. And the funny thing is, I checked this earlier this week, we're number 10 in the world. We've got better open data than Mexico, Denmark, United States, Colombia, Latvia, Japan. Um, and one of the strange things about this one is, you know, it's kind of, did Brexit already happen because Great Britain's kept separate? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, I'm not getting into politics on this one. But we're, we're punching above our weight. We're not doing too bad. So I mentioned data-driven journalism in terms of detailed data. So what does that mean? Uh, there's loads of quotes in here, but I kind of like mine because it's a bit selfish. Um, but using the principles of data science or um, open data and data science to ask, answer, or uh, ask, analyze, and answer complex or contentious questions or areas of inquiry using available evidence. Get your personality out of your argument. If you have a good idea, you should be able to find evidence to back it up. Um, and an awful lot of people ask, you know, why do, I, why do you do this kind of research? Or, you know, what do you want to know? Whenever you're looking into something, what do you want to know? Most people start with an, uh, a, a question, that they, a definitive question that they want answered. In my experience, this is usually the wrong question because uh, in any of these kind of investigations, you end up going completely off left field, completely losing track of whatever the fuck you were looking to do um, and just get lost and feel completely dejected and, and utter, utter ab abject failure. Um, I start off with a simpler question of what do you want to know more about? Um, so, uh, beginning of this week, whenever I was working on this, I just Googled for Northern Ireland education because that's an area that I care an awful lot about. And one thing kept coming up was this places crisis. You know, how many lives have you messed up with girls? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Prisoners' education, blah, blah, blah. Places crisis. 
Um, so started thinking, right, okay, so what, what is this crisis and is this something that's, that's complete, um, you know, is it hooey or is it something that's explainable or is it something that's uh, just, you know, standard corporate selfishness? Um, it turns out that I had no sensible way of answering that question, but I had an awful lot of fun exploring the area. Um, but first question is what relevant data is available? So this place, hands up who's gone to Open Data NI at some point. Okay, I'll change that. Who hasn't gone to Open Data NI at some point? And then I'll change that again. Who's going to visit Open Data NI after this talk? There we go. Um, it's not perfect, but what this does give you is the ability to search through what, you know, stupid questions, right? What kind of places, things, schools, and get a feeling for what data is available. Might not be great quality, as we'll see, but you can get a feeling for what data is available so you can start playing around. Um, so, I decided to focus on some, uh, you know, try and drill down into an area I went. Most of the news reports were talking about post-primary post education. Stick in there for the time being. So we're getting reference data, whatever that is. Enrollment sounds good. Uh, free school meals, yeah, that's useful data. It's a really lazy but useful sort of deprivation measure. Um, uh, SEN, which is special educational needs. Um, religion, ha, huh, yeah, let's not touch that one. Newcomers was one that I didn't really understand and didn't really touch because it's kind of one of these things of who's... Is that someone moving into the area? Is that immigration related? Is that school transfers? Whatever. Um, shrug. But what do we think we have? We think we have um, schools with at least sort of the council constituency locations and postcodes. Hands up who likes postcodes in Northern Ireland. Fuck me, just give it. We are the only devolved region that doesn't have access to our own postcode geolocation database because Scotland bought it, Wales bought it, Northern Ireland didn't fucking bother. Um, anyway, so we've got the enrollments for the schools in the 2016-17 year. Uh, we've got some kind of demographic comparisons that we can maybe use and potentially a churn rate, but there's some kind of questions over what that churn rate actually means. Um, what would be nice to have is more years, because um, we want to have a look at whether the situation today is better or worse than it used to be. Um, correlations to deprivation, you know, it, could we maybe get something about uh, whether there's a sort of statistical monoculture within the region or, you know, is there changes in the population? Is there, you know, can, can we identify correlations between schools that have places and schools that are doing achievement and stuff? Uh, correlation to claim and count. There's loads of this available, uh, available data. Um, I kind of, yeah, I think we can, we can get most of these, but we'll just see how far we can get in the time that we have. First things first. Who's familiar with the phrase ETL, extraction, transformation, and loading? Um, basically summarizes down to get the data, clean the data, store the data. Um, in this phase, we are actually kind of, yeah, do kind of do them properly-ish, and I'm only gonna do this example for one because my God, it was hell. Um, government open data is notoriously difficult to wander around. Um, we'll, let's start off with a couple of examples, but when in doubt, Pandas is a fantastic Python data manipulation library that just makes life so much easier. So easy mode. You basically go to Open Data NI, find the URL for the CSV file, and pop it in the top, and just read it straight from sort of pd.readcsv. You get the columns. You get, you know, these are explorable data. If you want, if you have extensions in your pandas, you can do like sorting and things like that. So you can sort of have a look at, you know, you get a feel for the data. But you know, nobody wants to be dealing with like loads of URLs, and you can't really sort of search through with URLs. Um, there's a nice little library called um, uh, where'd it go? Yeah. Uh, remote CCAN. So Open Data is built on a platform called CCAN, which is a sort of standardized open data database, um, kind of like a content management system for open data. Um, fun fact, um, I've got this set up so it automatically increments my version, num version number based on my age. Um, so I think I'm 30.1 at the minute. Um, and this is just basically a data set generator. So you feed it a resource ID, which is that UUID looking thing. And you just feed that straight into the uh, data frame as well. Um, comes out exactly the same, so we've got something where we could just keep a simpler list of resources. But that's great for one resource, but then what about if you want to go for loads of these? You need to track down, like, what's the resource ID for this one? What's the resource ID for this one? Um, it, uh, yeah, nobody got time for that. No, no. Um, so one of the nice things about CCAN is that you can package up multiple data sets or multiple resources as packages. And most importantly, you can enumerate them. So you can basically just ask the API, get me the list of your packages. And then this is just a big, no. Um, as we're gonna see, uh, naming conventions are absolutely fucking brilliant. Um, so yay. Uh, but we do have somewhere in there, 
uh, we've got, well, we can jump onto the next one, it's a bit of a cheat. We do have school census post-primary, that kind of makes sense. So then we can ask it again, right, what data sets do you have for it, or in this package? We've got the reference data. Basically, we've got the stuff that we wanted. So we have an automated way that we could enumerate this down. But there's a problem. Um, Open Data NI fundamentally doesn't have historical data. It's not good, or in, in this context, it's, it's, it doesn't have historical data. It might be able to say this year we've got all of these different packages, but we don't have those packages for 1516 and counting back in time. But Department of Education have this going back to 2009. That's a pretty, like, that's a decent time frame that we could play with. But it's all Excel documents and they're all different and they're all in weird URLs. Um, but we, we have to deal with it. We just, we're just going to have to work through it. Um, so first things first, let's see uh, if we just take the top one and grab it and then read the Excel. So Pandas has an Excel reading document. Um, so one, the format on this is crap because the first page, it's all done in sheets. So um, by default, read Excel will just read whatever the first one is, which is always a note field that goes for fucking ever. Um, but let's do the really simple thing. What about if we want to get the other years? So we just take their naming convention and flip it and go, no, no, 404, there's nothing there. So before we go into this, common, ex uh, common extraction hellscapes, inconsistent everything. Spot the difference. Fuck you. So, we've got at least the list. We have a list. We know how to get the list. Can we get that in a sensible format? Beautiful soup can read it. Yay! We can just point it directly at that page and then go like, get me the data or get me the links to the individual resource pages. Yay! Yay! It's not often you get a Love Island GIF in a technical conference. Um, with each of those, can we create a dictionary that has the, for each year, go to this place to get it? And then can we build something that actually walks the Excel or walks that data store file to get all of the Excel files that are available on that page? Yes, we can do this, but this doesn't look good. 2017, eight, eight, five, five, right. So we've already got a nice end year consist inconsistency. This is going to be fun. So. But technically, we've got the data. We've got the, the extraction bit done. We have the data on the drive. Um, transformation is where you contort and twist and uh, bastardize and kink the data until it's actually useful. This is the worst part about being a data scientist or a data engineer because this is the hellscape. Um, let's go through. Naming conventions. XLS, XLXS, XLS with uppercase, sup, blip, 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 blip. no, no, no. No, right, so let's just look at post-primary. Uh, yeah, that's not consistent at all. Yeah, yeah, this was, this was me like for most of this week just at the computer, every time there was something. But, so let's try and limit our scope and say just look for the places available. So we've got, oh shit, right, so for 2016 we've got explicit available places and for 17, but in all of the other years it was combined in some other data set and then somebody decided to change it. Brilliant, lovely. Oh, what happened in that intervening year is another wonderful one. Going from the standalone available sheets, we've got this approved enrollments, which is the total number of people on our, the, where the department said you can have this many people in your school. And this is what happened in 2015, where approved admissions. So it goes from you let in this many to you can have this many. How the fuck do you transfer between those? Right, so this is the point where you're throwing away data and just going, right, fuck that. Right, I know what to do with available places. I think that's the same as unfilled places. I can keep that. Actual enrollments and um, approved, uh, uh, approved enrollment, or sorry, approved enrollments and improved enrollments we can do there. Supernumerary pupils. Surprisingly enough, that means extra. It takes an awful lot of work to find out that that is actually true, but we'll come back to that. But this was just a massive go fuck yourself moment. This was just, uh, why, why? <laughs> So, right, is there any way we can deal with this automatically? Can we eventually, can we work out, right, what bits can we keep, what bits do we have to throw away? Can we parse all of the Excel sheets and go, okay, that's ugly as sin, we can get all of the sheets at least. Uh, okay, so we know that we've got metadata for everything, reference data for everything, but we have like, uh, oh, this is ugly as sin. Uh, this is a big piece of advice. 
Um, you, we can turn this into a true false metric, but use visualization for everything um, all the time because this is a lot easier to read than that graph. This tells you that, um, yeah, almost every year something changes in this data set. Yay. So without too much gambling around, 2,000 years later, skip through that one. A few highlights from the hellscape. Um, best thing about standards is how many there were to choose from. In almost every data set that we looked at, um, we needed to change. Who the fuck uses Comic Sans in serious documents? <laughs> I mean, th this was a 80 page document, which was the only listing online that I could find that explained what Northern Ireland supernumerary pupils actually meant. And it's in Comic Sans. Um, uh, using multiple tools is a bitch sometimes. If you have an XLX file open in Excel at the same time, it puts a header in it that means that it can't be opened or read by anything else. And helpfully, the, the lock area has your name in it. So that's a really helpful error message, but anyway. So let's go through it. Uh, yeah, I didn't want to touch special educational needs because it's a contentious issue. Everyone says machine readable. You keep using that word, it's not, yeah. That, that is not machine readable. Do you, what, what? Three rows of headers. Why is that not a joined cell that you could read once? Actually, if you look at Open Data NI, their data sets for this just have at stage five on code of practice and code of practice. It, they miss out the first two lines. Um, so yeah. Uh, footer notes. So you have a grid of data above this and then you've got this bullshit at the bottom and I'm going, fuck off. So. This is what's required to turn these into something useful. <laughs> but, so we've got the reference table, which is to address the locations of schools. We've got the available places. We've got potential enrollment. We've got free school meals. But that's what we really came for. We want graphs. So in, uh, uh, for anyone familiar with data frames, panels are effectively 3D data frames. So we can, get, we can sum over all the schools and basically this is the uh, number of pupils at each year, at each year, that's a complicated sentence, at each year group. Um, so I'll skip through some of this because we're tight for time. But um, in general, there's less people in schools, but there has been a dip since 2015. Uh, that's not interesting. That's not interesting either. But one thing to have a look at is that there's effectively a wave that you can see that follows through from each year to the next. You would expect that because that's people. Um, that's an ugly graph, but just showing the capabilities. That's also ugly, but that's in percentage terms. There was an awful lot of this that was effectively just a, yeah, skippable aside, um, I'm going to skip it, but when is zero not nothing? If someone wants to have a look at this, there's a fun fact where basically if you have nans and then you sum over nans, it becomes zero. And then whenever you mean over non-originated zeros, it ends up messing up with your sums. So yeah, have a look into that later. Uh, what the fuck happened to average cohort sizes? In 2015, basically, this is the per school average um, sort of total enrollment. Um, basically, uh, loads of people appeared. Is that what happened? No, it's actually simpler than that. You can dive into the data and if you have a look, there's what looks like a load of school closures in 2015. So how do we work that out? We uh, have a look and we can see, right, these zeros come in. So, right, that school closed at some point. Um, so we can go in and trace this down, and blah, blah, blah. Let's hide the secret sauce. Since 2009, 33 schools have been closed and 16 have been opened. Um, in 2013-14, 11 were closed. Um, so no surprise that there's been some pressure on the system. Um, slicing panels, that's a skippable aside. Now, I'm going to skip through an awful lot of this because this is hell, but it's basically trying to get from this town-based data because we don't have postcode data. If we had postcode data, this would make an awful lot more sense. Let's get to the fun. So that's not, so points are not useful to be able to show comparisons. So what we can do is we can get the constituency regions and then work out. If you're being fancy, you take your town points, work out if they're inside that region, but then you've got this dangerous problem where the town of Belfast is in Belfast South and nowhere else. Um, so that doesn't really sound right. But fortunately enough, in the original reference data, we do actually have the constituency for every school. So yeah, we can at least go straight into that. This is a load of fancy maths to get it done. But this is the per constituency total number of enrollments in 2017. Nice graph. Um, 
then this is the total enrollments per square kilometre. Fun fact, there are 204 secondary school students in South Belfast for every square, square kilometre. There are three in West Tyrone. <laughs> Sorry, 3.7, but who's counting? Um, so, we want to put these things into context because we've just got schools data, but what you can do is you can use some of the tools that we were talking about before. We can grab the population data, so basically around about the age of 50, people start dying. Um, <laughs> That is again, stacked bar, bar graphs are terrible, but this was a fun one of summarizing the age distribution. We get this curve. What's that look like over time? We get rainbows. The population's getting older. We're living longer. Um, so that's always a good sign. Um, this is a shortcut of being able to do that on a per constituency level. Um, Belfast South is kinky bastard. Basically at 18, everybody comes to South Belfast and that's more or less progressed forever. Um, Middle class morning, Newry, seemingly everybody has started moving to Newry and Morn um, in the sort of uh, middle age bit, so settling down and having families, fair enough. Um, Foyle has a massive brain drain. It's the only one that's reducing in population in the sort of under 65 age, age range. Uh, North Antrim, there's a little bit of an inversion whenever you're going, so 40 literally is the new 30. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, Lagan Valley has the same kind of thing where people are setting up homes. Um, this, I'm going to skip over a few of these, but Belfast basically takes the ticket. Um, everybody at the age of 18 goes to South Belfast, stays there for 10 years, and then fucks off back home. <laughs> this is the normalized one. The 18 to 25 age group takes up almost all of Belfast's population distribution. South Belfast, sorry. Um, normalized, you can really see that it just sucks away from everything else, except there's a weird pocket in North, or was that, uh, North Down of the 70s, and there's a little dip in the 40s. I think people are lying about being 40. Uh, year age profile, skipping through some of this because we want to get to the maps. Boring, boring, boring. Uh, so this is one of the questions of who is the, uh, so there we go, what's the average age? Fair enough. Who rules the roost? What quartile of age range is the most populous group? The youth have been invading from the West. <laughs> we'll come back to that one later. Um, Mars and Venus, if you want to go and find me, uh, women, or sorry, if you want to find, yeah, there are 10% fewer men in West Belfast than women. There are 2% more men uh, than women in uh, Fermanagh, so get your dating game on. Um, enrolled students per capita, that's boring. I'm gonna skip through an awful lot of this because I have gifts. <laughs> That's what we really came here for. Come on. This is the joy of live code. So no surprise, we're getting older. That's good. This is the progression where basically the youth have been invading and taking over um, and the elderly are just sticking to the coast. Um, what was the next one? Um, free school meals are rising with population, that's kind of expected, and as expected, they're um, sort of centered around Belfast and Foyle, but the disparity is getting worse, so basically everyone else is sort of lowering their proportion of free school meals except for the cities. Um, and there aren't necessarily fewer school places. Um, what's happening is that basically um, West Belfast has, per student, more available school places than anywhere else and everyone else has kind of settled it down so they've got a fairly even proportion. So there's something happening in West Belfast. It's possibly over-provisioning. Um, population di distribution isn't really changing at all. Um, no one's really sending any their kids different. Basically, um, you know, we've got this big dark area where I think everyone's just shipping their kids into Belfast. Um, but let's put it all together. The super ultra mega gif. <laughs> So this is available in high definition um, in the repo, so if anyone wants to have a look at it. Um, conclusions, East Antrim constituency is literally a little Britain. If you have a look at it, it looks like little Britain. See if you can, yeah, it just, it just looks like a little Britain, slightly twice, twisted. <laughs> so um, no one wants to go to school in West Belfast. Everyone wants to go to school in North Down, but there's no places. Um, places scandal is either overblown or people are just preference. Um, South Belfast steals all of the 18-year-olds and keeps them for a decade. Um, and Foyle has been experiencing a sustained brain drain of the under 35 that's now impacting services. Um, data is hard. Open data is hard without a budget. 
Um, people talk about the Pareto 80-20 rule where you get 80% of your results from 20% of your work or whichever way around it is. It's harder than that with open data and give us our goddamn postcode boundaries. Uh, that's me, thank you.